are back for another Q&A session. Thank you everyone for your feedback and submitting in your questions over the last couple of weeks. My name is Kinsey Van Druten and I am Immunolaboratory's holistic health coach who loves debunking the health myths flying around. With that said, the questions I am answering today are topics which you have probably heard many different sides to. So without further ado, let's begin. Nancy asks, the media has been saying that sugar substitutes may be causing this or that. I only use stevia. I am wondering if stevia falls into the category of bad sugar substitutes. I don't know how they process it or if it is bad for you as all the other sugar substitutes. Hey Nancy, I want to first start by telling you that stevia is a natural dried herb, not a man-made sugar derivative. However, what you find in the packets isn't just pure herbs, but a mixture of stevia leaf, some sort of desiccant to prevent clumping, and often a debittering agent, as it tends to have a sharp taste when used in larger quantities. Using the whole green stevia leaf, as they have been for centuries in Japan and South America, has some great health benefits, but using certain brands of stevia that have been processed and added to is not a good option. Let's dissect Truvia for a moment, which by the way is manufactured by the Coca-Cola company. I avoid this brand for that reason alone. Truvia goes through a 42 step process to make this process sweetener. First, the rhabdoside is extracted from the stevia leaf. Then, chemical solvents are added including acetonitrile, which is toxic to the liver and is a carcinogen. They then add in a GMO corn derivative in erythritol. As you can see, not all stevia products are created equal. There is a huge difference between consuming real stevia and the chemically processed Truvia. As more companies use stevia or some synthetic version of it in their products, you're probably going to hear more negative press about it. Remember, buy stevia without additives and that has been less processed. If you are looking for a good brand of stevia that tastes great and you can find in any health food store, try Sweet Leaf Stevia or New Naturals. If you want to try green stevia powder, I recommend Organic Traditions. The next questions were pretty similar, which is why I will answer them together. Marlene asks, do allergies sometimes go away? Jennifer asks, how do you or can you recover from a food intolerance? I tested intolerant for dairy and even though I've tried all the alternatives, life just doesn't seem worth living without ice cream, frozen yogurt, butter, and cream in my coffee. Judy asks, do food intolerances last indefinitely? Can a period of avoidance turn around an allergy, or is the sensitivity one experiences pretty much a lifetime problem? Let's first start by distinguishing what a food allergy versus sensitivity, and even intolerances for that matter, is it seems people use all three terms interchangeably. Sensitivities are technically not allergies because IgE prime mast cells are not involved. However, they are not intolerances either, as the individual has the appropriate enzyme for digesting whatever it is they are sensitive to. An example of sensitivity is celiac disease. IgE is not involved, but other immune cells participate. A true food allergy involves the immune system and your body creating an immediate response through IgE antibodies. The reaction is immediate and sometimes severe, often including respiratory problems. Intolerance is a gastrointestinal or metabolic response. It occurs when a person lacks the correct enzymes to digest the food. An example of such a condition is lactose intolerance. People who are lactose intolerant cannot digest lactose, a type of sugar found in milk and dairy products. The lactose passes into the large intestine undigested and the bacteria break it down, releasing gas, which can cause the feelings of bloating, pain, and diarrhea. This is not an allergy as no immune cells are involved. Now, to answer the question we've all been waiting for, if you are sensitive to a certain food, does that mean you have to avoid it forever? My answer is no. A food sensitivity is usually not permanent, as opposed to a food allergy, which usually is. Eliminate your food sensitivities for three months, then slowly introduce them back into your diet one at a time. If the underlying gastrointestinal dysfunction, such as dysbiosis or leaky gut, is treated, chances are your food sensitivity will have improved or gone away completely. I actually did a presentation not too long ago on whether or not we can overcome food allergies. I will post the link in the comments for you all to check out. 
Speaking of dysbiosis and leaky gut, I think it is a great time to answer Mia's question who asks, why after cutting out all the foods you suggested, does my stomach still hurt, gurgle, and remain firm? Hey Mia, it would be nice to say that every ache, pain, and disease can be the result of having a food allergy or sensitivity as that would make treating diseases a lot easier. But unfortunately, our bodies are more complex than that and other factors are sometimes involved. Of course, eliminating your food sensitivities is the first step along with making sure you are not consuming supplements or eating at a restaurant where your reactive foods can be hidden without you knowing. I also want you to consider some other causes to deal with stomach pain and firmness along with your sensitivities. The first thing to be more mindful of is that you are chewing well. Digestion actually starts in the mouth. Saliva mixes with your food and starts to break down the carbohydrates. You may even notice that the food tastes sweeter the longer you chew. Chewing also promotes slowing down. Most of us are so distracted or rushing when we eat that we don't notice when we're full. Filling up your stomach to the rim is another recipe for, di for digestion disaster. Give your belly room to process and break down the food properly. The next thing is to not drink with meals. Drinking enough water is important for our health and digestion. However, drinking with meals actually dilutes the stomach acid and makes it more challenging for your stomach to, di to digest food properly. Instead, drink your liquids away from your meals. As you are already aware, food sensitivities are a common cause of bloating and gas. In addition to your test results, if you haven't already removed gluten and dairy from your diet, try removing them and see if your symptoms improve. After two weeks, introduce the foods back, one at a time, and notice how your body responds. If you have a heightened reaction, you'll be able to tell, once and for all, what food is the culprit. Another group of common troublemakers are artificial sweeteners and diet soda. If you have not quit these toxic products yet, it's time to kick the habit. The next thing to consider is your gut flora. Sometimes, gas and bloating is not simply caused by the foods you are eating. Overpopulation of bad bacteria or yeast in the gut is quite common today due to a diet too high in sugar and the overuse of antibiotics, both in food and as medicine. The antibiotics kill off our healthy gut flora and the bad bacteria take over. Try taking an herbal antimicrobial for a few weeks to clean out the gut. After cleaning out the gut, it is important to repopulate with probiotics. While killing off and removing the bad bacteria is essential, it's just as important to repopulate your gut with good bacteria. Probiotics and probiotic-rich foods are an important part of the body's defense system and also help it to break down food and absorb nutrients. Last but not least, take a digestive enzyme. Digestive enzymes can help with gas and bloating that is often caused by the body's inability to process certain foods such as gluten or the sugars in dairy. I hope these answers and recommendations help you all while on your journey to health. Please submit questions to KinseyVD at immunolabs.com for our future Q&A series.